Well, hello everybody, it's Rob from PMDG, back with episode 6 of our 737 Small Bites. We have the airplane set up here at the magnificent Renton Scenery by Zvetsky Design. If you have not had a chance to look at it, there's a ton of reviews out there. Go look at it. Even better. Go get the scenery. You won't regret it, I promise, especially with the 737 coming. Alright, so this episode... We're going to dig in a little bit into the options that are available for you on the flight deck displays in the 737. We have a number of options available so that you can configure the way data is shown to you in order to match specific airline option packages and things of that nature. There's a lot of data changes that you can make. Some of it comes from the evolution of the airplane operationally. Some of it's unique packages that specific airlines asked for. We've got a good portion of it modeled, and we're going to show it to you here. So here we are back on the flight deck of the PMDG 737. To get into the area that we want to be in, press the menu key, then go to the PMDG setup menu. Then we're going to go over to the aircraft options setup menu here on the top left. Push that. This time we're going to go into displays, but before we do a quick review here, just in case this is the first time you're seeing it, at the top of this menu you'll see November 737 Bravo Whiskey. That matches the tail number on your airplane right here. Any changes that you make while you are under this menu structure are going to apply to this airplane and this airplane only. Two things I want you to know. One, there's no save button once you set them. They're there for good. You don't have to worry about them reverting or having to do it every time. The other thing is we've got a way to push all that stuff into other airplanes if you want it in more than one tail number. But page number, one through nine, title at the top of the page. It's all pretty straightforward. Once you've used it a little bit, you get used to seeing it. We'll page through these real quickly here. We're looking at displays page one of nine. We can come down here to the previous and next page buttons in order to scroll down through them. And there's nine pages of data here. So if we just start tapping our way through, you'll see we've got a couple of pages of PFD, a couple of pages of navigation display. And we've got a, after that, we've got a couple of pages of engine and system displays. In this video today, we're going to go through the primary flight displays. So this will be our focus. It's a couple pages of these. I'm going to walk you through some of these options so you can see what they are. But again, the changes that you make here are for this airplane, 737 Bravo Whiskey. So once you've got them set, that's the way this airplane will be configured for you. Okay, so we're going to start off. I'm going to skip the PFDND EFIS map. I'll get into that in a little bit. There's a reason why I'm going to skip over that for now. But we're going to look at the flight director. Go ahead and these are your flight director buttons right here. We can turn those on. And the flight director comes in two varieties in the 737. And we've modeled both of them for you. You will find that if you want to start a fight in a crew lounge, just walk in and ask what's the best type of flight director to use and then skedaddle out of the room because that's when the fight's going to start. So there's two types. There's a dual queue flight director and there is a single queue flight director. This is a dual queue. The vertical bar is for your roll command. The horizontal bar is for your pitch command. So the roll bar will move left or it'll move right. And then when you follow that, that'll give you your roll. The pitch bar will go up or down and Obviously, you'll follow that with pitch. That allows you to be able to work with pitch and roll independently while flying the airplane. The other option here is the single cue, which is a, as you can guess, I'm going to move my view here so I can get them both in the screen at the same time. There we go. All right. Uh, the single cue, as you can guess, is a single cue. Some people call it a flying wing, it's a flying V, but basically what you're trying to do is the magenta wing there moves up and down and it banks left and right and you're trying to get the little black triangular wings to fit in so that it looks just like this. Law of primacy, 
whatever it is that you learned to fly with, that's what you're going to like. I'm a dual queue guy. I cannot make sense of the single queue. It just doesn't work for me because I can't split pitch and roll. And uh, the airplane that I fly right now is a single queue, and I'm really not a fan of it. But I like dual queue. We're going to switch back to dual queue. All right, next up we've got the ground speed display. Ground speed display is tucked down in the corner of your primary flight display over here. Not all 737s have it. Many do. It is a wheel rotation derived piece of data. If you turn that off, you'll see it goes away. We can turn it back on and it comes back. Your ground speed will be displayed there. And then eventually it gets replaced with the Mach number that you're flying. That data there is actually pretty useful. It allows you to be able to tell at a glance whether you've got it a tailwind or a headwind component on an approach because you can compare it to your airspeed. It makes it nice and easy to get some evaluative data into your head while you're shooting an approach. Next up we've got the VREF plus 20 bug. Uh, again, not something that every 737 has. Um, here's a, an example of the airplane in flight. You can see we've got the ref speed there in green and that little white tick mark is 20 knots above it. And that gives you a really good, comfortable maneuver margin if you are shooting an approach that has you turning. If you are at that VREF plus 20 or higher, you know you've got real good buffet margin, so uh, you're flying at a safe airspeed. Additionally there, you can see there's a similar bug for the 100 knots bug. Same thing, there's just a little white tick mark at the 100 knots point on the airspeed tape, and you can see that right up here. I'm actually not entirely sure why it's there. Uh, most airlines use an 80 knot call out, but it's, it's there, it's a 100 knot bug. It's something that was asked for by a customer and they gave it to them. All right, page two of options for the primary flight display is rising runway. This is a graphical interpretation of a mechanical device that used to appear in attitude indicators. This little green box right here is actually the outline of a runway. It's partially blocked by the radar altimeter there, but as you descend on an ILS approach, it slowly raises up and meets the center of the display, and that provides an indication of your approaching the ground. You can see by turning it off here, it goes away, and we can turn it back on, and it's there again. It's uh, pretty standard in most glass cockpit airplanes to have something like this as a situational awareness aid. Speaking of situational awareness, one of the wonders of glass cockpit airplanes is that the scales presented to you for your vertical and lateral flight performance can be changed depending on the mode of flight in order to give you greater accuracy and situational awareness. You can find that here with the PFD ND Navigational Performance Scale Selector. It turns on your RNP indicators here in the nav display and also changes the vertical and horizontal profiles on the primary flight display. I'm sorry that's kind of chopped off to the side there. But those will change if you turn it off. You'll see it looks more like a standard ILS with lateral and vertical deviation indicators. But it's pretty much unheard of at this point for a modern airliner not to have the RNP capability. All right, pitch limit indicator pop-up. This is a set of yellow whiskers that will appear on your primary flight display if you're getting slow and it gives you a visual representation of your pitch limit before you can expect a stall buffet. These two items right here, the round rat out, it can live up here in the upper right hand corner. Normally the rat out lives down here, but you can have the rat out in the upper right corner or you can have an AOA indexer if your airline really loves you because AOA indexers are magnificent tools to have, especially in maneuvering flight. Okay, moving on to page three. The first item on this page is the landing altitude bar. This is a safety of flight item that's designed to enhance crew awareness as you descend into proximity of the runway surface. It's data derived and it comes from the airplane's knowledge of the runway altitude. You can see this amber bar right here. It starts out white, it turns amber as you get close to the ground. It's designed just to give you a visual reference so that you know you're within proximity to the runway surface. If you want an older style, you can turn it off just like that, and then you don't have that awareness bar there, but you can turn it back on. It's pretty standard now in modern airliners to have this type of awareness information, and you probably notice I'm saying that a lot in this segment. 
because a lot of these options that we've added were added because they came into the airplane after its initial certification. So we wanted to give you the ability to, to fly the original type and also the, the newer types as well. Next up, we've got the 2500 foot height alert. This is a visual cue that will appear here on your primary flight display in order just to bring it to your attention that you have now descended below 2500 foot radio altitude. It's triggered by the radio altimeter on the belly of the airplane and it's bouncing a signal off the ground. So that's telling you you've got 2500 feet down to the ground and it's something that you should be aware of. In the video on sound options, you'll see we can actually turn on the 2500 foot rat out call out, which will come on simultaneous to that display appearing. And that gives you twice as much awareness just to make sure that you know you're reaching the ground. All right, up next, we've got the this flashing yellow box here is your low airspeed alert. This is an awareness just in case you didn't notice the red bricks or the high pitch angle that came with being at very low speed but it begins to flash to make sure that it gets your attention that you're at low speed. Probably a good idea to leave that on. Show landing flaps. Down here on the lower left part of your primary flight display, see that 30 slash 130? We've selected flaps 30 for landing in, our, in the flight management system, and so it shows us that there just as an awareness. You can turn that off if you'd like. The earlier airplanes looked like this with the blank bottom corner of the display. but. We've all found that a little bit of extra data doesn't hurt, so turning that on, make sure that you know the flap setting and the reference speed that you're shooting for on the final approach. Flight path vector heading scale. This is a cool little tool, and this is, uh, show you here, the flight path vector button right there. If you push that, you'll notice that a little dot, a little circle with some wings is gonna appear here on your primary flight display. So we'll go ahead and we'll push the flight path vector button and then zoom in. See that little circle with the wings sticking out of it? That's your flight path vector that's showing you the energy direction of the airplane. And you can also see that there's heading indication along the horizon line there and it, it's conformal. It matches your navigation display. So if you're looking at your primary flight display and you're in a turn, you can just put that flight path vector right on the horizon. You'll see turning to the right here. And the other cool thing, if you look at the heading bug on the nav display, it's coming into view. And see that little magenta tick there on the primary flight display? That's the heading bug position. So if I'm flying around and I'm following a heading bug vector, this is just a really great tool. I can be looking right at my primary flight display as I'm flying the airplane. It makes things really simple. I'm not sure why more airplanes aren't using it, but there it is. If you like it, you got it. Okay. That'll be it for this episode. Next up, we're gonna be looking at all of the options to display data on the navigation display. A bunch more interesting stuff to show you there. See you next time.